Hello all. Today we are going to have a look at the most powerful tool in open source Linux arsenal. So it's called YAST, yet another system tool. So YAST requires you to enter your super user password. YAST is really powerful and it's like one stop solution for managing all your Linux machine. So at the first part you can see like it's having add-on products. So if you want to add or remove any modules of YAST you can use that. This is uh, the media check part. If you have like a CD or DVD if you want to check the integrity of the device you can use this tool. So if you click that it will open up the integrity checker. So here it will display your drive. You can do a check, you can do an eject or if you want you can also check an ISO file like a Linux installer for that matter. This is the software management section. So if you go inside first it will update the repositories. After that it will open up the software configuration slash software management section so here if you want to search for a package you can do that if you search for vlc and type hit search it will search for vlc and if you want to install just click it will automatically do the dependency check so if you look here you are going to see all the dependency list So if you select a package, YAS software management will automatically do the dependency for you. I'm not going to install VLC for now. So and the next main part is if you want to install like a whole group, like for example, if you are running GNOME desktop environment, for some reason you want to install like the whole KDE, you can click the view tab and click the patterns so here you can see currently we have gnome desktop environment installed so if you want you can go there and customize our installer or else if you want to change from gnome desktop to any other desktop like KDE for that matter we can use that or if you want to install mate you can use that if you want office group of software you can check if you want library office you can check that and install just press accept it will do it for you if you want like development packages if you want like programming packages everything it's available over here next one is software repositories so this part manages all your repos so you can enable or disable whichever repo you want so currently you can see how these three repos enabled basically it will refresh all the repositories but it, it's the only enabled ones are shown over here so this part hardware part will give you access to customization of your keyboard layout if you have printer connected to your workstation you can set up the printer you can basically do a network print or shared printing policy anything you want you can customize it over here you can configure a scanner you can configure your sound card this is really interesting so if you click the bootloader you can see our default bootloader which i have installed is grub for some reason if you're having systemd or lilo or some other bootloader it will be displayed over here here you can customize your kernel parameters and this portion you can change the bootloader option like this part deals with the timeout 
before you have to press any key to boot to the default system so if you want you can set it to 1 or 0 so, um, the default boot selection you can change it over here if you want custom boot order also you can do that over here if you click this if you want different one selected you can do that over here you can change your grub theme over here so this one is having like default open susa theme so if you want you can do modifications for that also this is date and time section if you want to change your date and time manually or if you want to change your time zone you can do that you can choose your time zone by clicking somewhere over here if you want to zoom in just press and it will zoom in press again some place it will change wherever you are or you can do this way and you can select your specific time zone if you want to change your time manually you can click the other setting you can do a manual time setup or you can do a network time provider setup so if you do an NTP setup it will automatically get your time based on your system timeline according to your timeline we have selected over here time zone we have selected over here next part is language you can change or add more languages to your system so if you are having a different keyboard with other language for example if you are having something like Japanese you can pick that you can modify your network settings over here so for me my settings are managed by network manager so it will not be available in YAS network module so it's already displaying the prompt network is currently handled by network manager not by YAST this is a basic partition if you want to create partitions or modify your existing partition you can do that over here this is the services manager so this this will deal with current running services if you want to terminate some service if you want to start some service um, you can do it from here you don't need to access the command line if you are too lazy to do that you can do it from here also yeah this one the default system target is graphical interface so you can change that so you can change this graphical interface to emergency mode in the daddy default target multi-user rescue mode whichever you want so basically it's like you want a graphical user interface a text-based interface a text-based interface without network with network something like that if you know the inits you will already know or oh, this part is like you can configure your system configuration you can edit any configuration in your system from here for example if I go to this config I already if I wanna modify some configurations I can do the configurations so I can do the arguments over here if I just type something I can add more arguments to the configuration file and you can set your host name you can uh, basically do like modification for your uh, IPv4 IPv6 host from here mm, but I find it like easy to do with host name CTL command NTP if you want to change your network time protocol configuration you can do that from here so by default this will connect to open sources NTP pool and collect the data regarding your time zone and set the time on your system so if you see it's 1847 over here so this you can modify this to now and boot so this what basically it does is it will sync the time just now when I open this and 
on at the boot time if you are having like a network enabled it will automatically sync your time for you if you want you can do it manually or turn it turn off the ntp completely or you can sync the time without a daemon you can set your proxy over here if you are using some kind of proxy you can enable a system wide proxy by using this setup so if you click enable proxy enter your proxy details it will automatically enable a system wide proxy for you you can do remote administration you can set up a samba server windows domain if you have like uh, multiple systems and some groups are associated with windows domain you can add or manage that domain membership over here here you have app armor configuration you have firewall d configuration so if you want just click it here you can change your zones so right now the firewall status is active if you click this you can see the firewall status is active if you want to do a reload or if you want to turn it off completely you can do that and click accept so there are different zones in your firewall so my default zone um no by default it will be public so ssh will be enabled here so because of my personal reasons i have removed ssh from here so if you want to add something over here you can click this and just click the add so it will add it your firewalls allowed configuration so if you want to remove something just click that and click remove it's done and click accept security center is used for like increasing your linux machine security so for your workstation if you need like some advanced security configurations like some specific hardening you can do that from here so it will allow you it will give you access to pretty much every security configuration available so if you want to disable syslog message for cron scripts you can do that over here enable tcp sync cookies if you want you can enable that or disable that just click enabled click again it's disabled you can do that you can check the predefined system configuration so if you don't know much you can select one of these so if you are having a workstation just click the workstation and press okay if you are having a roaming device or a network server click whichever suits your work and press okay i have uh, small custom settings like i have done some tweaking to my machine so it's showing custom settings for me so if you want you can set password aging minimum number of password acceptable password length you can do that you can make your password age from this number of days so it will give you like you can make your password expire in for example 15 days from the day it's first used then you can issue like a warning to the user because like your password will exp soon expire or something like that for that you can set number of days so you can set 15 or maybe 6 days before if you want you can do boot setting on um, modification so by default if you press control alt and delete your system will reboot you can do who can use system hibernation you can use like the login settings to allow like um, how much time delay after like um, specific number of password attempts like if you type your password incorrectly it will give you a 3 second delay by default if you want to have like a remote desktop graphical login you need to click this you need to check this and press okay if you don't want just leave it like that if you want you can set the number of user limit you can add like um, pretty much how many number of users you want how many number of groups you want you can do that over here you can set file permissions over here so by default it will be in easy mode if you 
want your system to be like secure in maximum way you can click paranoid but i will not recommend doing that because it will it will make you like a last password for each and everything you do so it's like not going to be comfortable for you that much and user and group management if you want to add a user if you want to create a new user if you want to add that user to super user group or wheel group or some other group create a custom group you can do that from this place so here you can see the login name of the user is superhost name is superhost the uid is 1000 by default the groups which this user is in is the user group so if you want to modify something or if you want to add a user you can click add you can type the user details and everything you can set custom details you can set um, password aging options you can give pass uh, ssh public keys generate separate ssh public keys if you have some sort of plugin you can do that from here also configuration of groups similarly you can do that you can like if you are an administrator and you want to create a set of new users you can set like uh, a default group um, default shell selection like if you want your new user to have access to csh you can use that over here so you need to replace this with slash bin slash zhh if you have csh installed you can set custom home directory all these things you can set an expiration date after which like the number of days the user account will be disabled or expired you can configure your authentication settings over here you can install hypervisor tools if you are using kvm qmo you can install like um, for some systems like if you install if you use some virtualization software you will not have like full screen access so you can use these things to enable all those support features If you are having a relocation type server you can configure it over here you can configure the host of the migration you can do that over here so this part will give you access to your system logs this will give you access to system d journals so if you click this you can see all the events that have happened in your linux system so if you want to search for something specific like for example if you want to search for grub you can do that so it will tell you this uh, snapshots if you want to configure your snapshots you can use that so i haven't installed snapper i'm not going to create any snapshot snapshots because this is a virtual machine and if it dies i will install a new one that's my policy i don't uh, spend too much time on cherooting and fixing a virtual machine so that's it